Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Casey, where we spend 30 minutes every week looking at the market. Uh, the reason I do this is because the market is moving and is changing. There are strategies that are also changing. So, um, yeah, we take 30 minutes out to analyze the market. I'm a numbers geek, um, and numbers don't lie. Uh, numbers guide us on where we're going to go, where we're going to price, where we market, where our buyer pool is coming from. So if you're going to have success, then you really need to be analytical at the, how we do this. And, um, and it's tough for sellers to be analytical because sellers have emotions involved. They know what Bob and Mary's house sold for. They have, they have egos, they have, um, you know, uh, prejudices that their house is better and da 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 da, da. So, so uh, that their town is better. I've never met anybody that didn't think their neighborhood was one of the premier neighborhoods in the area. So, and that's normal and that's great. And that's pride of ownership. But, you know, realtors are professionals that have to analyze data and, um, and use that to guide us. So in today's show, what we're going to talk about is we will look at the market. Is it changing? Yes, it is. Where is it changing? How is it changing? What corrective action do we need to take as both sellers and realtors? Um, luckily, we do have uh, you know a great number of realtors. In fact, Pat brought in a contract on a uh, for a buyer the other day, and there were six contracts. But luckily, that the listing agent watches Coffee with Casey and watches all the time, so was very excited to work with us. So, um, so it is it is a good step for realtors to build their education. Um, I build mine every week and, and, it, and this helps them hopefully build theirs. So let's look at you know, where the market is, where it's headed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We're gonna go over some quick charts and graphs. Um, this is an analytical process I have to do every week. Um, and that keeps me up to date on, on where we are. And then we'll talk, we'll talk about corrective action. Today's show is basically, you know, this is a tale of two cities. One listing has 55 people in two days look at it and gets contracts 100,000 over list. The other house had, you know, the other house got very few listings and did, received no contracts. So it's, a, it's really a tale of two markets. And as you know, there's 11,000 markets that we have to analyze in Northern Virginia. And um, I think that when I'm analyzing houses now, we have to be really more thoughtful. Um, this is not throwing on the market and, and everybody comes a running. If you do it wrong, it's gonna sit. We'll take a look at the evidence of that right now, okay? So let me, and I am gonna give you my, my, um, my phone number uh, for text purposes or give me a call, but during the show, if you have a question or you don't understand the word success rate or failure rate or um, you know percentage of homes under contract, if you don't understand anything or you want me to address a question you have, all you got to do is text me at 703-508-2535. I got my trusty dusty phone right here opened up. So, so if I see something, I'll, I'll try and address it as soon as I get a break. But for now, let's go online and let's take a look at, if I can find it, let's take a look at how the market's doing right now. So I'm going to share my screen with you. We're going to whip over to to the nice screen that Julie made for us. Hopefully you all can see that. So this chart is very important to me when I'm, when I'm analyzing a market that we're getting ready to put a house in. And what this chart shows you is what percentage of homes are under contract, right? So over here in Percival, so the, the chart is luxury homes are in green and family homes are in blue, right? So let's say in McLean, a luxury home is over a million dollars and a family home is 800 to a million. But in Centerville or in uh, Herndon, let's say the luxury home is over 800,000 and a family home is 600 to 800. So I adjust as I'm going through this market. But I mean, a good seller's market is anything over 60%. So as you look at your town, if you look at your market, you'll see a majority of these are over 60%. So in luxury homes, Ashburn, 63%. Haymarket, luxury homes, 60%. Now, let me tell you, that number has been as low as 15%, okay? So 
Are we still in a good market? Are there still plenty of buyers out there? The answer is absolutely. I mean, two weeks ago, we had a house with 99 people that came to see it and sold for 200,000 over list price. This week, we had a home where 55 people came to see it and the seller literally said on Saturday, pick a contract. I'm not gonna go through this anymore. We had 55 showings. So, you know, that enough is enough. And of course it did generate 11 contracts, but that's in, that's in two days worth of showing you had 11 contracts before Saturday night and went live Thursday afternoon. So is the buyer pool out there? Yes. So why are some of these homes still sitting, you know, still sitting on the market? Well, you know, we'll go over that a little bit today, but as you can see, if you're in Percyville, there's 13 homes on the market, 12 are under contract. And Haymarket is a similar stat for family homes. So if you're looking at this, does that mean we can overprice? No, it, we can't overprice, but it does tell us what to expect. It does tell us when somebody walks in and says, I'll give you a contract for X amount of dollars. We're looking at it going, eh, I don't think so. We have too many people favoring it. Not enough inventory on the market. I think we're at a premium. So that guides us. And you have to understand, it's not my money I'm dealing with, it's your money. I mean, we're trying to get a fifty dollars or $100,000 bonus on your house. And there's certain ways and techniques we, we get that. So, so looking at this, hopefully you've picked out your market. Oakton Family Homes, 73% under contract. So if your home is in Oakton and it's not under contract, there's, there's a problem. I mean, because the market is out there. You know, the only markets that I think struggle are McLean always, for some reason, always struggles. 38% um, of their homes, those family homes, 38% are, are under contract. Now, now, if everyone else is in the 50s and 60s and even 70s, forget about the 90s, 50s, 60s, why is 38% of the homes in McLean between 600 and 800, I'm sorry, between 800 and a million, why is it that only 33, 38% are under contract? And why is it only 46% of the homes are under contract in McLean over a million dollars? I, I, I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you exactly why, okay? Because I've, you know, we work in McLean and I work with sellers in McLean and they pick a number. I want 1.5 million. I want 1.8 million. I'm not taking a dollar less than 2 million. You can't do it that way. I don't care if you're an A-type person. I don't care if you're a CEO of a business. I don't care if you're really powerful. I don't care if you're a lobbyist. I don't care what you are. You cannot do it that way. You've got to trust the analytics and the pricing models to, to price your house. And then you have to put your ego in your pocket and you have to say, okay, we may get 1.25 million, but everybody's been asking 115. So instead of asking 1.25, Ask 115, you'll get your 1.25. We do it every weekend. So in fact, not only do you get the 1.25, sometimes you get 1.36, like we just got. So, so it, it, it does, you gotta take the ego, you gotta take the emotions, you gotta put them in your pocket. You have to come up with a strategy, a pricing strategy that's gonna get your house under contract. It is inexcusable with this many buyers that only 30% of the family homes are under contract in McLean and 46%. And then in Great Falls, 42% of luxury homes. Again, why? People pick a number. Um, Billy and I went into a house and we, we were looking at it. My number is about 135 and they wanted 175. And he's going to tell me all the reasons why it's worth 175. It's just space feature and function, guys. It's just space feature and function for your market. How big is it? How old is it? How many upgrades do you have? How many features do you have? Is there a lot premium or discount? It's worth 1.35 million. And I mean, as soon as he said it's 175, not a penny less, we followed up the computer. We went over to the VNA and we had a few pops and had a good time because we're not going to waste time with that. But, you know, other agents really want a listing, so they'll take it at 175. That's why you see some of this. That's why you see this. Let me, let me just, this is the line. This is the buyer pool, seller pool. Um, buyer market, seller market, 60%. Anything over 60%, heavy seller's market. So look at all the markets that are over that 60% mark. So let's let's look at, at this. This is what I call the failure rate. So if I take a listing and we put it on the market, 
Um, I'm using all our skills, marketing, pricing, everything we can possibly do to make sure that house sells. So in the last 30 days, last 30 days, 37% of the homes in Arlington, and these are the luxury homes, this is over a million dollars, 37% withdrew unsold, 49% of the McLean homes. So for every home that's sold in the last 30 days, one withdrew unsold. So just to give you some scope, our default rate or our failure rate is about 5%. Um, for whatever reason, 5% of our houses don't sell, 6%. I mean, 50% of the houses don't sell. Whoever's doing it over there, I don't know. Falls Church, 47% of the homes in Falls Church withdrew, unsold, 53% sold. So, so this is not a, you know, real estate is a game of, of being professional at pricing, at marketing, at predictive analysis. Um, you know, let me give you, a, let me give you a perfect example. There's a home in Virginia run. It is going, it's worth about $815,000. We put it on for $799. Okay. There was only four people that favored that. And I was not getting the feeling like that there was enough market at 800. So I went to the sellers. I said, I know we want 800. I know it's worth 815, but we're going to have to start at a buyer pool at $750,000. And obviously, you know, to a seller, it's a little bit of a shock, but not when they look at the track record we have by doing this. So we went to $750,000. The buyer pool tripled. The amount of people, instead of four people favoring the house, 14 people favor the house. Instead of nobody scheduling showings, I got a ton of scheduled showings coming in. So, you know, I know the target is 800 or 815, but is the buyer pool at 815? Is it at 800? Every time you go over $50,000, right? you lose two thirds of your market. So, so we wanna be very thoughtful. Um, and you know, it's frustrating because sometimes I'll have a house, I think it's worth a million fifty. And so I put on a million and God's darn it if we're still not getting traction at that million dollars. And we know a neighbor sold at one million fifty, and and it's very difficult to go to 950 to get that buyer pool to push it back up. It's very, very difficult to do that when you know that that neighbor sold, but it is what it is. Um, so the predictive analysis in the case that's launching right now in Virginia Run was, you know, let me explain a predictive analysis. So we put a home on during coming soon and we market the living heck out of it and we test that home on the market, right? So we make sure that we've tested the home and see what the buyer pool says. And if the buyer pool is not there and the buyer pool is not receptive and there's no showings and there's only very few favorites, we have to go to the seller and we have to make a tough call. We need to go from 800 to 750. It's not easy for a seller. Again, emotions, um, prejudices, my house is so good, my house is worth this. And, then the, and that's true. But we've got to get people into the house. Once you get people into the house, then they'll see how wonderful it is then they'll bid it up to its highest and best offer. So, so lucky enough, we have a lot of sellers that say, yep, you're right, we'll go with your strategy. We trust you, do it. Boom, we go from 1.2 to 1.15. And before you know it, we got a 1.36 contract. You go from one point, uh, from 800 to 750, boom, our favorites triple. So, you know, as you're moving forward in this market, and if you're a realtor, it is very difficult to have a Tuesday conversation with a seller saying, you don't have enough buyers. I know what your seller sold. You don't have enough buyers. Have we peaked in price? Yeah, we're pretty much peaking in price. And I know that because we had eight contracts or 10 contracts on a house and everybody was right about that same number. And they all knew there was 800 con eight contracts and they, nobody would go over it. So we kind of know we're at a little bit of a ceiling right now based on interest rates, based on jobs, based on the economy, which has a little people, you know, has a few people nervous. So, 
So do I think we're kind of peaking? Yeah, I think we're peaking. Do I think they're going back down? Eh, not yet. I mean, in most markets, we're still, we're still getting the number that we thought we would get. Um, is there disappointments in the market right now? Yes, there is disappointments in the market. But today we're going to talk about next steps. When you're disappointed, what's the next step? Okay, so let me get rid of this. I think I beat the failure, failure rates to death. Um, but I, I just want everyone to know this is not a sure thing when you put your house on the market. The normal, the normal, um, what do I want to call it? Failure rate is 40%. So 40% of the houses in the market usually withdraw unsold. Right now, we are 37% average. Um, not tragedy, uh, not great. Okay. I would say, you know, we were at 20%. Um, five months ago. So now we're at 37%. It's doubled. So let's be careful out there at how we do it. And let's talk about next steps. Let's say that we've done the predictive analysis. We've adjusted the price. We've ignored the numbers. I do it. I do it. That predictive analysis clearly told me don't launch at that number, but I, I just couldn't see going off lower. So we go off at that number crickets. Perfect example. This, I got a, I got a townhouse in, in uh, Old Town Alexandria and there ain't no, no way I'm going less than a million dollars. Mark's not there. House worth a million fifty. Mark's not there. Okay. So we've got to then look <coughs> at next steps. Okay. So when a house doesn't sell in the first weekend, what are we going to do? We didn't get the 50 showings. We didn't, for whatever reason, the market's not there. Maybe we didn't get it low enough on the pricing, although I'll be damned if I'm going a, a penny lower. That's my prejudice. You know, sometimes I, I know what it's worth and I'm not going lower. Well, you know, maybe I'm just hard-headed like some of the sellers in McLean. Maybe I don't, you know, maybe I'm hard-headed. But let's say next step's going. So the, it works like this. The first wave comes in, that generates a lot of showings and a lot of contracts and they bid it up. Okay. So when we don't get that, <coughs> what's our next step? Well, the next step is to go back to all the favorites, all the showing realtors, all the, we need data. We need information. We gotta, we gotta make a decision here in two or three weeks. And I'm not waiting. I mean, I need to know data right now. I need to talk. My agents are talking with the realtors who are talking with their buyers. They're getting comments. Everyone that showed it has, a, has an opinion. They're not gonna just sit at their computer and type it out for you. You gotta dig. Now, I know, oops, sorry guys, I just lost you on this. Now, I know that I've mentioned a guy named Chris Voss before, but again, he's a hostage negotiator. He's great at business negotiations. Our guys are trained to do this and you know, trained to interrogate the agents. Agents are busy, they don't wanna talk to you. you know. Seems like they're not interested in this house. Well, seems like. Remember, I said those are the most two most important words in real estate. It seems like, sounds like, seems like, and then they start giving their opinions. They don't want to talk, but you got to get them started. You got to say, it seems like they're not interested in this house. Was there anything they found good about the house? Let's let's start taking them down a positive path. And what were their concerns? We never say problems, we say concerns. What are their concerns? And before you know it, we're in a good, that where do they come from? Where do they, you know, because we need to know where our buyer pool is coming from. What have they seen? So it's the interrogation, open-ended questions that let them walk them down a path. Is it a pain in the ass? Yes, it is. But it's essential to us being able to consult with a seller and say, here's what the problem is. Here's where we are. So, so <clears throat> that's a, that's a two week process. We're not dropping any prices. We're not adjusting anything. We're not cleaning anything. You know, maybe they're saying, "Hey, something was wrong with the house. We need to fix that." Okay, there's something wrong with the house. We need to fix it. If 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 the marketing is not getting out, if I don't have five thousand people that have you know at least seen this thing online, or or I don't have a big enough buyer pool. Then we need to adjust, but you can't adjust within two, three weeks. You got to, you got to just gather information in two or three weeks. So then, because, and let me tell you why, because the first group decides they don't want to bid on the house. They like the house. 
They just don't want to get in a bidding war. Okay, all right. What those people are called is the Monbacks. Monbacks are people that see the house, see that it didn't go under contract, come on back, and then they look at the house and then they put in a contract. Maybe it's full price, maybe it's not full price. Okay, a seller's got a decision. Oh wait, no, that's not the decision. The decision is, you know, <clears throat> we need to take the Monbacks because they're the ones that truly are looking for this house. We call the perfect buyers that first wave. Those are the perfect buyers. That house, that price range, that school district, um, that condition, that size. So those are the perfect buyers. We're not gonna let them go. We're gonna negotiate the living hell out of it, okay? We need to work on them. Now, a seller may say, nah, I I'm waiting for my price. No, if you were gonna get that price, that price would have come here. So, so we need to really negotiate and get the highest and best offer from this particular buyer that happens to be from the perfect buyer pool. We can't let them go because time is not on our side. As time clicks on, three weeks, four weeks, now people are starting to think there's something wrong with the house and it gets stale. They're looking at new stuff coming on the market. Now our buyers are trained that we'll start looking at 30 days. When they've been on the market for 30 days, they didn't get what they want to get. Now we swoop in. Now we make the, an offer based on my pricing models of what the house is truly worth, not what it's listed for. You buyers, don't get wrapped up in that bidding war stuff. Buyers, let it clear through. There's plenty of realtors that overpriced their houses. We just bought one for $1.3 million. It was put on the market for 1.5, sat for three or four months. That's our target. You like it? Yes. Forget about the price. You like it? Yes. Okay. I'll determine, we'll determine what the price is. So we come in, we prove it's really worth 1.3, not 1.5. And that's when we get a reasonable house at a reasonable price. So, so the next steps for my sellers are let's, let's, let's gather data. Let's work on the Monbacks. If we get a contract, don't let it go. We need to jump on that contract. We need to stay with them. Not that we're desperate and we're not because if I drop that price, I'm going to quadruple my buyer pool. That's when we'll get, you know, we're talking to the selling agent. We're saying that's when, uh, when I drop my price, I'm going to quadruple the buyer pool and then offers are going to come in and most likely they're going to bump it over what I originally listed it at. So, so that's uh, leverage that we use against the Monbacks that are coming in with that contract in two weeks. Our job is just not to let a seller's emotion of, now I'll wait. No, no, we're not going to wait. The longer we wait, the lower the price is. There's tons of statistics on that. Um, you know, the only regret some sellers may have is they let a, a bigger contract go early and now they wish they had it back. So we're, our job is to make sure we don't make that mistake. So, so you agents, I know your seller may say, you know, no, I'll wait. Well, we can do that. But my concerns are, the longer it sits, the less we're gonna get. My concerns are that statistics show that homes that go over 30 days get 98% instead of 104%. So, so, you know, time is not an ally. We need to educate the sellers. We need to be very realistic about it. We cannot be afraid to hurt their feelings. And again, I'm talking to Samson property agents, if you're listening, you know, I know it might hurt their feelings, but it doesn't, it's, you've got to be professional about it and say, look, if it's the Monbacks coming back, we need to close the Monbacks because they are part of that perfect buyer pool. Okay. So let's say we don't get a contract, the Monbacks are boom, boom. We do a brand new pricing model. What's going on? Does something happen to the market? Are there now 10 houses competing with us instead of one? We got to start all over again. We got to start the pricing all over again. All right. We get to just before 30 days, we go temp off. Temp off will, it's kind of like taking a tree and shaking the tree to see if anything will fall out. When you go temp off, um, you will have five, six, seven, eight people maybe giving you a call going, hey, what's going on? I mean, we were watching that house. What happened? See, see, you're watching, right? So then the interrogation starts with them. Well, we're getting ready to, um, you know, to drop the price. And when that happens, we're going to hit four times the buyer pool. And that's going to generate contracts that may take us right back, if not more than where we started at. 
So the agent is going, you're, you're going to do what? You're going to drop the price. You're going to quadruple your buyer pool. Then you are going to have to compete with new people. That sometimes, that temp off, sometimes will shake that contract free and say, well, can I get in on this before you do it? Can we submit a contract before you drop the price and bring in a much bigger buyer pool? Absolutely. I mean, our job is to generate contracts and get the, get the conversation going. So once that contract comes in, we have the leverage because I'm getting ready to drop that price. And when we drop that price, we're going to quadruple the buyer pool. And I got plenty of examples on dropping it and selling it within the first seven days. So, you know, so that's the next step. Gather data, work on Monbacks, continue to gather data if we don't get a contract. We get ready, we do a brand new pricing, uh, brand new pricing model, we do a market analysis, we do all of that, and about the, that's week three. Week four, halfway through, we go temp off. Because week five, we're bringing it back on the market. We're redoing everything. We're redoing the marketing plan. We're redoing everything at the new price. And the reason you got to do everything all over again, it's a new buyer pool. Those people are looking at 850, not 900. Originally, if you went off at nine, and now I'm going to move it to 850, that's a whole new buyer pool. It is three times bigger than the $900,000 buyer pool. So the question is, why don't you just go to 850 originally? A lot of people do. House is worth 800. We just did it. We just, we just, just, you just see, you can see it live as we're doing it. Yesterday, we had four people that were favoring a house on Eagle Tavern in Virginia Run. Four. We took the price from 800 to 750, even though it's worth 815. We took it to 750. There's 14 with eight possibles. So that's 23 possibles. We've gone from four to 23, see? So, so that bigger buyer pool is gonna generate multiple contracts. Where does it go? Well, it's 815. So an agent will come to me and say, well, why did you drop it to 750 if it's worth 800? Bigger buyer pool. Yeah, one more con one in multiple contracts, bigger buyer pool. By the way, here's the pricing model. It's worth 815. It's not worth 800. It's worth 815. I just need to get more people in the thing. And then I point out that our average home sells at 107% of whatever we listed it for. And those two documents go to the agent that's preparing contracts and they can see they can make their offers. And we leave the back part open-ended, right? It sounds something like this. How's worth $815,000? But those houses don't back to parkland like this does. And it doesn't have that nice porch on the back where you can watch the Nats games and Redskins games, you know, at night and have cocktails and all. So they don't have that. I'm not quite sure what they're willing to pay for that, but we're going to find out. So it's worth a 15, but the benefits of this house could generate more. So the thing text goes to the, to the agent house worth 815. Here's our summary. Here's the models. Um, However, most of these houses don't have, don't bark to pack, don't back to parkland. So we're not sure where it's gonna go. Leave it open-ended, leave it open-ended. So, so that's the process of the next steps on where you go. And again, you know, it, you really have to, if I have, if, if, if I have um, stubbed a toe, it's I've become hard headed and said, I'm not going lower than this price. I'm digging in, you know, and now I'm where I'm exactly like some of the people that I complain about in, in McLean that dig in on the wrong price, but I'm not off by that much. I mean, come on, neighbor sold for me 50, we're a million. Why are we not getting, why are we not getting buyers? Maybe a perfect buyer came in and bought that house. I don't know. Maybe that perfect buyer isn't in the market right now that we can't find. Or the buyer pool at a million is, is just not generating it. We got to go to 950. We'll see. So, so that's, that's kind of the next steps that you have to do. Um, the, uh, you have to take the emotions out of it. You have to take, uh, you know, so some agents are afraid that the sellers are going to get angry if, if we tell them to drop a price. Um, it's a strategy and it's a process and you gotta be, you gotta be true to the process. And that's why 95% of our houses sell. That's why 95% of the houses 
you know, go on the market. That's why we get 107% of our list price. Um, that's why we can do $125 million this year. So, you know, we've got to be realistic in this market. Um, we got off. It's been easy for sellers um, through the first nine months of this year. It's been very easy. No home inspections, one. One appraisal. I mean, that's 90% of the hassle of selling a house, appraisals and, and home inspections. So, but the market is shifting back. The prices have elevated. When you're listing your house, don't list it what people got, list it what people listed it at to get that price. So perfect example. Let me give you a perfect example. So Waterside, I've got a house in Burke. It's in a neighborhood that Edgewater, that is a great neighborhood, million dollar homes. So so we put it out for a million, one, uh, 1.15 million. We got 1.25 million. We get another house, similar house, same, same kind of thing. Well, they got 1.25. Yeah, I know, but we started at 1.15. That's how we got to 1.25. So we put it out for 1.15. What do we get? 1.25. So in comes house number three. Here it comes. Where are we going to be? We're not going 1.25. We're going 1.15. Why? Work like a charm. Work like a charm. Well, what happens if we don't get those kind of bids and your house isn't worth it? We had 55 people come through that house before the seller said, cut off the showings, cancel everything. I'm taking the best contract we have so far, 1.25. House number three is coming on the market, it's Waterside. Anybody knows a house, look for a house in Burke, it's gonna come off about 115, it'll go for 125. Um, it will have a ton of showings and, uh, but, but that's what it is. I mean, it's, it was it worth, it's worth 1.25 million. We just can't ask that. We have to ask the lower number. So that's kind of the way the market's working today. My name is Casey Sampson. I run the Casey Sampson team. If you're looking to get in touch with me, I'm at 703-508-2535. My email address is Casey at CaseySampson.com. You can see all of these podcasts at caseysampson.com slash podcast. Julie does a great, great job. And let me just say this, okay? And again, I don't want to pull Dr. Phil on everybody where all he does is sell stuff on his, on his show. I'm talking about his wife. I will just say that the team that we've put together that's been together solid now for seven, eight years, Julie and I have been together now for maybe 12, 13 years is an all-star rock star team, whether it's Morgan and Colby or Pam or Pat or Billy or whoever you're working with on this team, uh, Kelly, um, Michelle, who does our, you know, our um, communication or Julie that does all our marketing and social media. I am telling you, it's not, it's not me. Uh, we've got a rock star team that helps these sellers out and they've done a hell of a job. And when we say we got a one point, uh, 107% for all our listings, you know, these are the people that are out there in the trenches doing the marketing, you know, yeah, I do the pricing and all that stuff and, and, you know, predictive analysis and correct, correct when things go wrong. But let me tell you something, Morgan and Colby and Billy and Pat and Pam and, and Kelly, when they go into a house, they make sure that house is set up that it's going to sell. So just a really, really good solid team. If you're looking for us, 703-508. 2535 or Casey at CaseySampson.com. We'll see you next Thursday at 11 o'clock on Thursday for another edition of Coffee with Casey. See you guys.